Hi, I'm Sean from Tom Woods Custom Drive Shafts. Today I'm going to explain to you slip yoke eliminator kits, what they do, and why you might need one. So the first thing to know is what is a slip yoke and what is being eliminated. Well, this is a, a drive shaft like you might find in a TJ or a YJ, um, Jeep XJ, a lot of different vehicles they'll use this. Not just Jeeps, other vehicles as well. This is real similar to what you'd see in a TJ. I'm using this as an example because it's, it's nice and compact. So uh, a slip yoke eliminator kit, it doesn't really eliminate the slip yoke, it moves it from the transfer case to the drive shaft. This drive shaft right here is what you end up with, and you can see this drive shaft compresses and extends, so it has a slip yoke, but that slip yoke is built into it. The reason to do a slip yoke eliminator kit is really to facilitate this type of shaft, which is called a double carbon style drive shaft. Uh, a lot of times people also call this a CV. What this does is this is a, a pretty stock setup. So if I measure these angles, um, I measured it earlier, but the, the transfer case is, is about, this one's about three degrees. This drive shaft is uh, 10 degrees. And the pinion is about six degrees. So I'm gonna draw that out a little bit. We have the, the transfer case here, and that is pointed down about, I think I said three degrees. And then we have the drive shaft, and that was 10 degrees. And then the pinion, that's the pinion. Let's just call it three. I think we measured it at six, but let's just call it three so it's parallel with the trans case. That would be an ideal setup. So what you have here is you have a joint and a joint, and the, the joint angle is the difference between the drive shaft and whatever it attaches to. So you've got uh, 10 degree minus uh, three is a seven degree angle a seven degree angle. So you have two joints running at seven degrees each. Um, we'll dive a little deeper into this in another video explaining all about drive shaft angles, but that's the basic concept here. So now we'll see what happens when we lift the Jeep. For this, I have this set up on some, some spacers here, but what we have right here, these pieces of tube are eight inches. So I'm gonna take these out, put in some five inch pieces of tube. So that's gonna simulate a three inch lift. Okay, so now with this lowered three inches, we'll measure these angles again. So these things haven't changed because they've just moved you know, straight up and down. What's really changed and you can see is the angle of the drive shaft. And on a, on a TJ, on a YJ, those shorter wheelbase vehicles, um, when we're talking rise over run, this is only you know, 12 inches in a lot of vehicles. So three inches across a 12 inch span really creates a lot of angle. If I measure this now, so before it was about 10 degrees, now it is a whopping 28 degrees. Now if we take the uh, whiteboard, with these new angles, we've got 28 degrees on the drive shaft. Um, we'll still call it three here, three here. So now the difference is we've got 25 and 25. So considerable change from before. And what happens when you have too much angle here is this U-joint is gonna shudder, it's gonna run real rough. Again, that's covered more in another video. Uh, it really dives deep into drive shaft angles. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to install a slip yoke eliminator kit and show how these angles change. Um, what we're gonna end up with is instead of having the slip yoke here, it's gonna have a yoke, just a bolt-on yoke, a lot like this one here. And that yoke's gonna sit about right there, the edge of the yoke. So the, the U-joint is gonna move closer. So that, in, in effect, lengthens the drive shaft. But there's some other advantages that you get with that as well, which you'll see later. All right, so now we've installed the slip yoke eliminator kit. So now there's not a slip yoke here anymore, it's a bolt-on yoke. And then the double carbon style drive shaft, this bolts to that yoke, and then the other end bolts to the axle just the way it normally would. Uh, before I get too far, one thing I, I wanna cover is a lot of people think that because there's two joints here, that this is gonna flex twice as far as a single joint. And that's not really the case. There's some other components in here that limit the flexibility. So as far as how far it flexes before it stops, you're gonna get pretty similar amount of angle out of a single joint here as you do the double carden. What this double carden does is it transmits power more smoothly. So before where we had 25 degrees of joint angle here on one joint, now there's two joints running at about 12 and a half each. So that splits it up, it smooths out the power flow. You'll see that, that it's not even 25 anymore. Um, I measured this again and now we're at about 22. So remember we're subtracting this from this. This was three. So we subtract three from 22. Now we have a 19 degree angle here. So that means each of these joints is running at, uh, I guess, nine and a half um, degrees each. Now this joint, uh, there's too many dance partners, if you will. So this joint is running at um, 19 degrees and that's too much. And it's, it's out of sync with these two joints. So what we do with the double carden is we rotate this pinion up so it points toward the transit case and in line with the drive shaft. 
Um, I will simulate that here. So what we're looking for in most vehicles is we want whatever the angle of the drive shaft is, we want the angle of the pinion to be about two degrees less. So we bring it up right in line with the drive shaft and then two degrees down and that's perfect. Okay, so I've adjusted this pinion. It's now at about 14 degrees. The drive shaft um, is now at about 16. And what happens when you bring the pinion up is you are lifting up the bottom of the drive shaft. So my hand's the pinion, the drive shaft's the drive shaft. You raise the pinion, you lift up the drive shaft. So that decreases this angle. Um, and right now we have about a two degree difference between these two, which is perfect. And then up here, we now have 16. This is still three. So that's a 13 degree joint angle. So now these joints are only running at six and a half degrees each. So that's much, much better. If you remember before with the stock shaft and the, you know, the lift, we had about 25 degrees of joint angle at each end, which was real severe. Now, the reason we want this to be two degrees, two reasons, on a vehicle with leaf springs, under load, the wheels are trying to turn one way, the axle, I guess the wheels will be going this way, the axle is trying to turn the other way. So you're gonna get a little bit of axle wrap. And if you have, let's say it's four degrees of axle wrap, you start with two, you go to one, to zero, to one, to two again, and it stays within that two degree window the whole time. If you start with zero, it's gonna go from zero to four, and then you're gonna get a little bit of vibration out of this joint, or you could. Um, on a, uh, like a TJ or an XJ or a vehicle with, with coil springs and control arms, the axle wasn't wrapping, but you still want a little bit of joint angle here, and that is because these U-joints, these bearing caps are bearings. They need to do their job as bearings. They need to be able to move a little bit, and if they don't, the, uh, the needle bearings, they'll just kind of stagnate in the end of the trunnions. They'll wear grooves in the trunnions. And so you want to have them move just a little bit, a degree or two, maybe three degrees. That's perfect here. So one thing I, I didn't uh, discuss earlier is transfer case drop and pinion shims or pinion adjustment. A lot of times you'll get a lift. Maybe it's a three inch lift and it comes with a one inch transfer case drop or it comes with some shims or maybe both. And what that's really doing is if you have a three inch lift and then the, the transfer case drop, it's basically a spacer and it just drops that transfer case down one inch. So it tricks the drive shaft into thinking it's a, a two inch lift. It minimizes the effects of those angles. Same thing with the shims. You're bringing that pinion up a little bit and it makes it where it's not right, but it makes it a little less wrong and, and livable for some people. But it's kind of a half-ass fix. The real fix is to do the slip yoke eliminator kit and the double carden style drive shaft. So if you get a, a trans case drop, maybe you want to put that in temporarily. Maybe just save yourself the time and go straight to the, the correct solution. So just to recap, a slip yoke eliminator kit, it does not eliminate the slip yoke, uh, which is, this is the old style slip yoke. What it does is it moves it to the drive shaft but the real reason to do it is to shorten up the output of the transit case a little bit, um, make it able to, to run a, a double carton style drive shaft, and reduce the angles on the drive shaft, which is going to give you a smoother power flow if you have a lifted vehicle.